Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to configure the iTheme Security Pro uh, security plugin for WordPress. I've seen videos on iThemes, the security, the non-paid version, so I, and I haven't seen any on the premium, the paid version, so that's what this video is about. The current version is 7.0.3. So if, if you, uh, of course, please subscribe if you like videos on um, WordPress security, performance, SEO, and I'm throwing in a little crypto in there. That would be really cool and uh, just like this video if you do find it useful whatever I get the most likes on those are videos I'm gonna do so the reason I like iTheme Security Pro is I think it has the best feature set at the lowest price compared to other security plugins and I don't think it's even close so let me go over some of the pricing for you so you can see you can get this license for one site for eighty dollars per year but if you go down here it says blogger plan includes an additional site license for a site license for two site licenses. So I don't know why they have one here and it says two down here. I have no idea. But that's that. Um, then the freelancer, you can have up to 10 sites for 127. I have this because I'm an agency, or I should say I'm a freelancer and I you know have multiple clients and I install this on all my client sites. For 199 per year, you get unlimited sites, which I think is amazing. For 499, you get iTheme Security Pro Gold. And then back you also get Backup Buddy and then um, what, a bunch of other add-ons. I've not been able to find anything on what gold means. I have no idea what that is. Um, oh, look, I just saw it here. It's this. <laughs> so that's what that is. Okay, so that makes sense. I just saw that. Um, yeah, and the support's really good. I've reached out to them a couple times, and you get responses within generally 24 hours, so it's really good. So that's the pricing. Let me check my notes here. Okay, and as always, before doing anything, just make, a, make sure you have a good backup of your site. Okay, so once you install, I'm not going to go over the install. It's pretty straightforward. You, you either get the plugin from the, the WordPress directory, um, you know, go to plugins and go to add new here. But if you have the paid version, you get it and you download it from the site, obviously, and go to add new and add it that way, right? So once you install it, you go to security. So there's two main areas. Well, there's three, but I never really, I generally, I haven't had an opportunity to, but I've looked through the logs. But if, if, if your site gets compromised, that's when you'd really want to dig into the logs. So this is the dashboard. I really don't use the dashboard because I get the daily security digest. So if something goes wrong, I know it. I never really come here. But if you want to look through it, you can. I'll just kind of briefly go over what all this stuff is. And you can, these are called, um, I think they call these cards. Let's see. So you can create a new dashboard if you don't like these default ones here, right? So you can see lockouts. There's the number of lockouts. So if somebody's trying to, if it detects somebody's trying to, you know, brute force into your website, brute force meaning just try passwords over and over again from a certain IP, it's going to lock them out. Um, so that's that. Users is if you have like an actual user that looks like they're trying, a WordPress user that's trying to do this type of thing, it's going to lock them out. I'm the only user on this blog. Um, so, and if this is just a blog that I run, it's trivia. I don't really use it, do it much. It's more for like demo purposes and whatnot. Um, so bands, there's currently no bands. And we'll get into bands and more features. So these are the site scans. This is what does like a daily scan, as you can see here. And I did some a manual scan. That's why you see two here. But you see 27, 28, 20. Uh, 28, 29, it does a, a manual scan. Actually, maybe it does twice a day. I always thought it did once a day. And it's just going to look for vulnerabilities. And you can go look at the detailed report here. Known vulnerabilities. So let's go to show details. And I actually fixed this. So the next time I run a scan, it shouldn't appear. And I'll actually do a manual scan. So if you click on it, you can get more information. You can actually go to the CVE and look at like the detailed information of what's really going on. So you can really get deep. With with uh, with this, they're going to give you a lot of good information if you want to find out what what the what the risks are. So let's go ahead. and You can click and view the logs here, but let's go scan now. It's generally pretty quick. Okay, see clean, no vulnerabilities, um, block list, etc. So there we go. Update summary. So plugin updates, theme updates. I don't see why that's useful, to be honest with you. And these are the brute force attacks it's detected. So you can see January 9th, it detected 11 attacks. And this is just going to happen. I mean, there's going to be bots constantly, and I guess humans too, constantly trying to hack into your WordPress site. So this is give you a representation as to what's going on. Now your, your hosting provider probably does a lot of this stuff too, like at, you know, at the host level, but this is a second layer of security. And I definitely would have a second layer of security in WordPress. So these are banned users, all this kind of stuff. Like I said, I don't come here that much. This is the user security profiles, and this is the um, the admin right here, which is me. Okay, so if you go up here, 
This is where you can go to settings, which we'll go to in a second. You can, oh, this is where you can edit these cards here, right? Notifications, so you can set up notifications, but we're going to go to the notification with once we go to settings. So if you go to settings, it's going to go here. So you also get there by going down here. I'll show you it's the same thing. Okay, I don't really like the layout of it. This seems kind of confusing. Like, for example, tools and advanced. I just wish those were more sections here. And when you click around, it kind of gets jumbled up. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. I just think it's kind of confusing. No big deal, because once you learn it, just like anything, it's pretty easy. So you can see features here. So you can go down the list here, or you can click here. You can see login, security, lock, site check, details. That's these right here. So let's go over these. So sometimes with the setting, there's a little gear icon. Right, so two-factor authentication. So, you know, you log in with your email, then it sends you a token to your phone or, you know, an email or whatever. So this is, um, that's what that is. So do you want to enable it? Yes. That's I, I, I think it's great that this plugin has that built into it. I think because a lot of times you have a lot of websites that I've worked with, they actually have, you know, se a separate premium plugin just for two-factor authentication. And this, it's included within the iTheme Security Pro. I don't think it's in the free version, but I, I could be wrong. So let's click on the detailed settings. So what this means is available methods available to users. So do you want them? So you can do all methods. So it can be a um, a mobile app. So you know get, get uh, Google Authenticator to get that token. It can send them an email to get the code for two-factor authentication or backup authentication codes. Um, for this web, if it was a if it was a business website, I would just do mobile app. But since this website, I mean it's I mean of course I don't want it to get hacked, but I just do all methods. This basically simplifies the, the um, setup procedure for two-factor authentication, so you can disable on first login, so that you know you, they can just log in first, then set it up, and you can you can actually customize the text here. I think I did something. There you go. And if the okay, so if the plugin detects that a user account is vulnerable, it's going to force them to use two-factor authentication. Let me see. Okay. Got my notes here. Let me see. Okay, right. So, if it detects the site is vulnerable, you know, like outdated plugins, whatever, it's going to force two-factor authentication. That's what that setting means. So, password lo passwordless login. Let me see if I can make the font a little bigger. Okay, it's one twenty-five. That's good. So, this is I don't like it because it basically you, you could have a you go to log in. And it'll say, if you want to log in without your password, click here, and it'll shoot you an email. Then in that email, you click on a link, and it logs you into your website. I think that's, I don't like that, because what if somebody compromises your email? Then they can get into your email and your WordPress site. So I disable that. I would rec I don't know why somebody would do that. Um, so this is, when if this is enabled, and this is another thing I don't like, if this is disabled, I wish this would disappear. Because if you don't know what these settings mean, it can kind of get a little confusing. Again, not a big deal. Once you get understand it, it's not a big deal. So what method, if this is enabled, what method do you want to present the user logging in with? The method that says click, you know, I can send you an email to log in, or do you want it to um, ask for the username and password, right? So that's that. And then trusted devices. So trusted devices, it's, it's fairly new, and you can change groups up here as well, like authors, contributors, blah, blah, blah. We'll get into that in a little bit here in a second. So... Basically, you can configure this to only allow people to log in from certain trusted devices. And you can restrict capabilities if it doesn't recognize the device. And then this is an extra layer of protection. I have it on. I don't know exactly what it does because it's, you know, something proprietary to them. And if it, if it detects, um, oh, I'm sorry. It, it, it's not going to allow, um, a user that changed devices to keep going. Like in the middle of, in the middle of the session. I believe that's what it is, right? So I don't really pay much. I don't use trusted devices, so I'm not, 100% sure it's still beta. I don't like using anything that's beta. I like for things to get worked out first. So I don't want to lock, log my, lock myself out of my site. So this is banned users, right? So these are banned IP addresses. These are IP addresses that are known in the, you know, um, cloud, crowdsourced to, to trying to, for trying to compromise people's websites. So you definitely want to accept that, right? There's no reason not to, not to make use of of other people's information. You definitely want to do that so you can get, use the default ban list. Okay, so limit, limit the number of IPs in the server configuration file. So what this is, 
if if it goes over a hundred, it's still it's going to be configured using I think it's PHP. Uh, yeah, but that's just it's more efficient to do it here, right? So if 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 you might want to consider raising, I think the default was a hundred. You might want to consider raising this. Um, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I haven't noticed any performance problems um, by keeping it at one hundred. But if you have a ton of IPs trying to compromise your site, it might be something you want to increase here. So user agents. So what user agents is? If I go to so this is the blog here. If you go to inspect and you go to network, let me just do a refresh. So every session has a user agent with it. I think it's here at the bottom. So you can see here, my website detected me, like me accessing that website was using Mozilla 5. So that's the user agent. So for example, Google's user agent for, you know, the index for the bot is like Google bot for indexing stuff. Uh, Internet Explorer has its agent, uh, has its own user agent, et cetera, et cetera. So again, I've never used it because people can just spoof their user agent. But if some, if by some reason you find that a specific user agent is messing with your website, you could block it there. Never had to do that. Not in WordPress, not on the Linux level, nowhere, like ever in my career. Okay, so I've changed the admin username to something other than admin. I think that's a definitely a good security practice. So this automatically is going to ban an IP, the IP address of anybody who tries to log in with the admin username. I think that's good. The max login attempts per host before the ban occurs, um, or before it's locked out. I should say locked. Well, I guess that could be considered the same thing. So it's five. I think that's reasonable because it's not. It's possible I, I I've you know messed up my password three times before, and I don't want to lock myself out. Now, if I did, I could go in through the OS, through the operating system, through the hosting provider, whatever, and get myself locked out. But it's not something I want to fool with. Okay, so this is max login attempts per user. So this is basically for actually people that have accounts. How many times are you going to allow them to log uh, attempt to log in before locking them out? And minutes to remember a bad login, five. All right. So if the ex if this expires, then this is going to reset up here. I think I think these are all the defaults. I think I kept all the defaults. Network proof, Bruce. Network brute force. Uh, modeling bad IPs is pro, pro, reported as a problem by the network. That kind of goes back to crowdsourcing. So you want to keep that checked, right? Um, people within the network, whoever's in the quote unquote network that iTheme Security Pro or iThemes has access to, it's going to ban those for you. And you need to get the API key here. And if you didn't have this here, and if I want this, mine's configured, and you can, you can, you can type, you can use this all you want. I'm going to change it so it doesn't matter. If this wasn't configured, you'd see a, a link right here that said get API key. So in order to use the network brute force protection, which again, it's crowdsourced, you know, it's protection from places all around the internet that I think is like a huge database somewhere. Um, that's what this is for. So moving along. So again, I could go to lockouts. I could go to site check here or I could go down here. So we're going to go to site check down here. And again, if you like this content, uh, please subscribe. And definitely, if, if you don't want to subscribe, I totally get that. We all subscribe to way too much stuff. Um, just do, please give me a like. That would be really helpful because I'm trying to grow my channel. So site check. So this is really cool. So this is going to try to look. It's, it's going to scan. I think it happens daily. That look for files that have changed on your website. Right. So if you make a lot of changes, naturally that things are going to change. But if you're not making any changes and you're getting alerts that, you know, files are changing, you might want to find out what's going on. Now, the one you definitely want to exclude is the caching directory because there's, there's it, your, your cache is constantly being updated. If not, you're going to get a ton of alerts for this. And you can ignore, you can, these are extensions. You want to ignore dot log files, you know, images, all that kind of stuff. So you, if there's a certain type of file you want to ignore, you can put them here, put that here. So set it and forget it. This is exactly, I think this is how 95% of the people would have it, should have it. Set it, set it and forget it. And if you have, there's any issues, you'll get an email alert with it. And that's how I, uh, that's how I do everything. Okay, so version management. Um, so basically, do you want the plugin to auto update WordPress? My hosting provider does this, or maybe it's actually built in. I think it's actually built into WordPress that does it now. So I don't worry about it. Plugins, I don't want to do this. So you can do custom all, you know, if you want plugins to automatically update, WordPress natively handles that now in themes, right? So you can do that if you want to. It's up to you. Do you want to scan for old WordPress WordPress sites, you know, in your on your file system that could um, allow attacker to compromise the server. Do that. 
I don't have it. I, I don't have any extra WordPress sites on my on my server, so I'll never get an alert about that unless maybe some, somebody compromises my site and tries to put that in there. But if if they're already on my file system, then I'm you know have a pro bigger problem than installing a secondary WordPress installation. And then auto update if it fixes the vulnerability. I don't like generally don't like a lot of things auto updating. I like to kind of see what's going on. So, but that I mean, it, you could set it and forget it if you wanted to. But I don't see I don't see this like really ever being a problem for me. Okay, utilities. Moving along. So this is another cool feature. Another cool feature of the of the plugin. It can do database backups for you, right? Schedule it. Boom, boom. I don't do it because that's handled through. I do have updraft up. Updraft Plus, the plugin, and it's also done at my hosting provider. I use SiteGround through my hosting provider, and I definitely would recommend having two, two backups, one at your hosting provider and one, you know, whether it's Updraft Plus, whether it's iTheme Security, whatever, Backup Buddy within the WordPress environment, because I've had, you know, backups get corrupt and fail at the hosting provider level, so it's always good to have redundant backups. So if you're if you're backing up the um, database, these are the tables. Let me see if I skip this. Press backup files. So if you want to compress the database files after you back them up, that's you can do that. Excluded tables, blah blah blah. So this is all database stuff. If you if you if you know if you're a database guy, this will make sense to you, sense to you. If you're not, then you probably don't want to worry about this. Just take the defaults. Okay, geolocation. So this is kind of cool. It can really just give you a good. Uh, visual of where the intruders are coming from like on a map so if you want you can just go get a free api key and again this is what i'm going to change um, you can just go to it sign up for it here and when you get alerts it's going to show it more like on a map it can't i should say it could show it on a map instead of just the ip address and it's, it's the ip address and it's pop in like general location it's going to pinpoint on a map just a nice to have thing i don't think it's that big of a deal and this is the paid version i believe so if you have the paid version you can put that in here um, so iThemes uses static image maps to, like I said, to display the location of where uh, these logins are occurring from and whatnot. If you want to get, um, use a service that's a little more, I guess, I've never done it, but if that's, maybe it's going to be um, a little more accurate perhaps, or maybe it's going to be a little, little more detailed, you can get a Mapbox API key and that I believe is free, or you can use the, the Map, MapQuest API key. I think it's kind of overkill probably, or since I've never done it, maybe I'm just wrong, but I don't really care about, if I need, if, if I determine an I, somebody's trying to attack me from a certain IP address, I can just go look that up and find out where it is, right? I don't need all this fancy stuff. This is just the, I, I, the only reason I did this is because I wanted to see if it worked. And I put it in there and it's working, so I just leave it. No big deal. So moving along. Oh, anytime there's going to be, if there's alerts, you're going to get them up here and you're going to have a little number. You know what I mean? So if you have an alert, it's going to pop up up there. Oh, and here's the help. If you need help, you can go there. And these are where some notifications are going to appear. And this is where the get back to the dashboard. And then you can search here. Right? Moving along. So notifications. You can get swarmed with notifications. Basically, this is the one I definitely get, Security Digest. It's a daily digest as to what's going on. You can change it to daily, weekly, change to the recipients. This is just an overview of there's, if there's any what's going on on your site. Um, so you can get an alert when a site lockout occurs. I don't do that. I just rely on the security digest. Now, if it's a corporation or something you want to know immediately, it's like a big company, you probably want to do something like that. When a data back, database backup occurs, when a file change occurs. So all this is consolidated into this daily security digest. So password login, two-factor email. So all this, so this is the two-factor, the two-factor authentication email. Um, so you can, you can customize it instead of say it says click the button to continue manually to enter the authentication below to finish logging in. I mean, if you want to change it, you can. I don't, I guess you could put your company name in it or something. I don't see it being, uh, that useful. And then inactive user report. I don't know why I have that. I don't want that. Oh. Okay. And then we're moving on to the final two sections. So we got tools. And just keep in mind, oh, we actually didn't go user group. So these are just settings. So you have authors, contributors, editors, and so these are the WordPress user groups. You can set default settings for groups. So for all editors, you like do you want them to be able to manage the, uh, the iTheme security? So to manage this stuff, do you want authors to be able to 
enable the dashboard creation. So this is where you would force everybody, all editors, to have strong passwords. And of course I would do that. Refuse compromised passwords. So if, if iTheme Security is aware of that password being compromised and found it, I think it's in the Have I Been Owned database, yeah, right here, um, then it's not going to allow that person to use that password. And then password age. Skip two-factor onboarding, I wouldn't do that. Application passwords, require two-factor authentication, I definitely would do that. Allow remembering device, you can say remember this device option, and it won't be um, prompted for two-factor authentication in the next 30 days, I definitely would not do that. Enable passwordless login. So this is enabled for me just because, actually I turned it off, this, see I turned this off in that other setting, so it doesn't matter what I have here. So you don't need, you can just keep that on or off. Since I don't have any authors on my website, or what am I doing, editors, I don't worry about this. Right, but it's not something I, I don't like password this login, but that's just a preference. Um, two factor to, to bypass password this login, and then you can. I like having activity monitoring set up so you can kind of, if, if something goes wrong, and yet let's say you have 10 users on your WordPress installation on your WordPress environment, if you have this configured, it's really going to track who's doing what. So if you need to go back and do an audit and find out who possibly did something, you'll have that information. And then trusted devices, we went over that, and I don't use that so. <laughs> Okay, basically this is just going to determine the IP address. So if we do this, that's my IP address, right? This is change the user ID for the change the user ID for the first WordPress user. So basically, the first user is user ID is one, and there's ways that you can enumerate WordPress and find out people's usernames based on the user ID. I don't want to get too much into it, but basically that. Um, this you could change one to I guess like you know 32 or something like that. just basically as long as it's not one because hackers know that one is the admin ID and from that it can enumerate and get the the username a lot of times do you want to change the database prefix so everybody know uh, most people people that are trying to you know compromise website WordPress website specifically know that the WordPress database always starts with WP underscore this will essentially just change it to something let me just show you so the prefixes change from from WP underscore to RVCY93. So it's just another layer of security, right? Now, if somebody has access to your your hosting environment, um, or even within WordPress, they can just install like a file manager plugin and they can find this stuff out, right? But if there's a, if there's a vulnerability or something, it's just there's no reason not to do it that I can think of. So you can check file permissions. So this is at the OS level, and if you want to, you can set these to the suggested level. So this is the current value. And these are Linux file permissions. So uh, this is, well, I'm not going to get too much into this. If you want to look, look, look at uh, Linux file permissions, Unix file permissions, you can use the chmod command, chmod, and you can kind of go look over all this stuff. And if you want to change these, you can go change these, right? So this is basically coming from HT Access. This, if you went, if you dropped to your command line and went to, you know, VI or whatever text editor you want to use, dot HD access, you would see this stuff in there. So it's just another way to display it. I don't think you can edit it from here. Yeah, you probably wouldn't want to. Hmm, maybe, what is that? See, I've never looked at it from here. Let's see. I don't know why it says run, but let's click it and see what happens. Maybe it just reloads it? Hmm, I didn't do anything. I don't know. So this is WP config rules. Again, this is, if I was doing any of this stuff, I would drop to the command line and do it. So salt, salts. The only reason you would use this is if you if somebody's compromised your website, you just want to run this quickly, and it's gonna it's automatically gonna log everybody out. That's that's where you want to do that. You can also do it through the command line, editing a file. But if you want to do it from here, that's where you would do it. Okay, and this is just to, and I don't even know what this is actually. Detect the correct way to identify user pages based on your serving your Hmm. Not, honestly, not even sure what that is. But let's see what comes up. I think it's just going to throw up the IP address again. Okay, I'm going to give it a few more seconds. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause this recording while this works. Okay, it came back. Your site does not support SSL. So, not sure what that is, but I obviously do support SSL. So, something I've never looked at. Most of this, I don't look at any of this stuff. Right? I know. I should under I should have understood that before recording this video. Maybe that's something new. I don't know. Well, like I said, I changed like some threshold levels 
and I just wait for the di daily digest report. Okay, so moving on to advanced. So do you want to protect system files? If you do, click here, click here. So basically, if you go to, let me, let's see, if, if somebody went to this, let's say file.com as a WordPress site and went to readme.html, that would, that, that they could see the, the readme file. And within the readme file, they could be, they could be able to tell like what version of WordPress it is. And the more you can obscure information about your environment, the harder it's going to be for people to, um, to compromise it. So there's no reason not to check that. Disable directory browsing. This is so people can't list direct files in operating system directories. So obviously you'd want to, usually it's, it's not allowed anyway, but you want to have that check mark. Disab disable PHP and upload. So all this stuff, you want to just make sure all this PHP, you don't want to allow just people to start executing PHP all over the place, right? So you just want to um, disable all that. And if you if you're if if you're a developer, you'll know when you need this stuff. If you don't know, just keep this stuff disabled. So disable the file editor. So this is when you go to appearance editor or whatever. This is gonna disable it. Um, I think that's what that is. Yeah, that's what that is. But like, if somebody has access to your WordPress environment, it doesn't matter. They can just use File Manager plugin and go to your operating system and do whatever they want. So that's kind of useless to me, in my opinion. Um, XML RPC. So this is what like used I, XML XML RPC is like if you remember WordPress Live Writer, I think it was called. You could write a blog post from like a Microsoft Word type of program and then upload it to WordPress as a blog post. And that's the kind of stuff that uses XM, XML RPC. It says that Jetpack uses it and mobile apps and pingbacks. I, I disable it. It's just, no, it's, it's old school. Nobody really does it. As far as I know, there's not m many people that do anything with it anymore. So I would get rid of it. But if you, if you know you need it, you can go ahead and get, get, go ahead and enable it. And if you, if you're using it, then you can come here and, uh, I'll let some kind of authentication stuff. But I would just, 99% of the people can disable it. So the REST API, the REST API is basically, it's a, you know, the the interface to interact with WordPress sites programmatically, like using a, a, API access, right? You can just get information on the site and pass information from, you know, different programs to the site. You don't want to just have anybody, you want to just make, 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 make sure people log in and authenticate before being able to use the API. So the default, surprisingly to this, I think is default access. You want to restrict access. So email address and use. So can people log in? Do they can they log in with their email address only, their username only, or an email address or username? Right. So I would do. I think that's and. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. Yeah. So they can log in with both. That's. I mean, if you don't want, I guess I can see a, a need for that. If you just want people only to be able to log in with their username, then you'd want to change that to username only. Fourth unique nickname. I don't. I don't really. Doesn't really matter to me. Um, I mean, it could could help with, help with like you know bot uh, enumerate, I guess bot harvesting and whatnot. But I don't think it's that big of a deal. Disable extra user archives. So you could pe um, people can enumerate like the author profile pages and um, determine usernames and stuff like that. So it's probably something I should disable. Just like I said, this isn't. I'm not worried about security too much on this site. I don't really see a downside to doing it. So let me go ahead and do that. Hey, hide back end. So instead of WP admin, what this does, let me refresh it. I don't want to. This just bots and um, people trying to hack into your site. They'll just go to obviously file dot file dot com WP admin, right? So it's just an, if you could change it to something like my login page. It's just another another layer of protection right so people can't even get to the login page but i mean there's there's ways around it using the rest api and stuff but it's just another another nice level of protection um so i have it here ryan login right and that's the slug you can enable redirection let me see what that is custom location of your site instead of throwing a four okay so you don't throw the 403 the forbidden error so i guess this is just obfuscating what's going on right i, I don't really care it doesn't matter you can figure out this stuff out anyway without this. And WordPress, the admin video. Okay, not even sure. I, probably, I should have looked at some of this stuff. I didn't know a lot of this. Not a lot. I didn't know some of this more advanced stuff existed. Um, 
So if you need, I guess if you're smart enough and you need custom login actions, you can do that stuff here. I'm not familiar with that. I don't know what that is, and I've never used it. So I think that's it. the The big things I like on this are the two factor authentication. Let me let me think. Two factor authentication. I like the file scans that it does um, to check for changing files on the operating system. I love the security digest. I love the network and local brute force protection. And um, I think those are the main things I like about it. And then changing the login page. I like that the WP admin to Ryan login. But it's just a really it's a really it's a really non I'm not going to say cheap. It's a really non um, expensive tool. And there's just a ton of features with it. And the company seems like a legit company. Haven't had any problems. They responded to my support tickets when I've ever emailed them. And I've never had any problems. So I hope this has helped. If you like this content, subscribe, please. If you and if you don't want to subscribe, like I said, totally get it. We subscribe to too many things. But if you just, if you if you if you found this useful, just you know throw me a like. That would be really helpful. And it's a signal to me that you guys like these videos. And I will continue to make them because if nobody's watching these, I'm not going to make them and waste my time. So. Hopefully this helps. If you need anything, let me know if there's any videos you want me to make on performance, security, WordPress, SEO, crypto, whatever, let me know and I'll, I will get it done if I know something about it. So that's it and have a good day.